for that last game, but it's a different one. Uh, so this is going to be four green. Uh, for those of you who are n new to this portion of SmackDown, what I do is I uh, basically go over a replay that someone has submitted and uh, make comments on it and try and help them improve. Um, I'm going to set some of this stuff down a little bit so that... Uh, so that there's not as much lag because uh, as we all know that uh, replays tend to lag when you have higher graphics settings set so uh, I will turn down the graphics slightly um, I also want to see what he what he wrote here to see what we're looking for specifically he says uh, he'd appreciate analysis on gameplay whenever you get a chance he's been starting with French in an attempt to understand the game better and he's having trouble uh, doing Samwise 12's build correctly especially with 700 wood popula population and housing uh, the only wrecks he has are of victories but he's sure there's loads to critique so uh, this one is Brit versus French and it uh, looks like he's going to be trying to do Sam's build. So uh, we'll be watching from his perspective. His opponent here uh, is Ste95, and uh, he will be uh, our opponent that we'll be not watching so much, um, but we'll be focusing on Forkrin. So uh, take a look at here. Kills his first bison. Everything looks good there. Uh, he mentions that he's doing Sam's build. Uh, uh, his villager split was actually pretty good. Uh, got his first villager in queue pretty early on. Looks like before 11 seconds. That's pretty good. Um, has his scouts out scouting around. Good. Everything's looking pretty good there. Uh, one thing that I do want to mention about Sam's build is that it is a pretty tight cool. timing. And so if you're not very experienced doing it or if you haven't uh, done it multiple times, uh, it can be a little bit difficult to like properly pull off. So if you're new to French in general, uh, it might be a little difficult to pull off. But uh, looks like so far you've got everything going pretty good. You've got your market coming down. The one thing that I uh, that I am a bit concerned about is you're not going to be actually able to use your market just yet. We pause here for a moment. You've built your market. Great, perfect, love that. But now, what's the follow-up here? Like, are you going to be able to get hunting dogs? It's looking to me like you have this villager going to gather this coin crate, and then you're going to probably buy 100 wood from your market and then use that to build a house. But then once you have just been better saving your resources and not building this market, just building the single house, uh, because as it were for the time being, you don't have the resources to build uh, hunting dogs and... Uh, Maybe you've scouted out, well, there's 50 coins, so you'll, you'll need to still get at least 50 more wood. And if that's your plan, you should be like, you should be doing that right now. You should be chopping 50 wood. Um, let's take a look at what you do here. Uh, you'll need 25 coin as well, uh, coincidentally, but you'll likely be able to get that over here. Um, okay, good. You've realized, hey, I need that coin. Try and plan that out a little bit better. I mean, just in general, like... You should have already known that you know, like you're going to be uh, needing a little bit of extra wood. You should try and calculate those things up right, as much awesome. as possible early in the game, so that you can get that upgrade as early as possible. Like foreseeably, you can probably get your hunting dogs like by 1:30 at least every single game, and that's not going to happen this game. Also, uh, coincidentally, your hunt uh, mentioning hunts is really starting to get out of control. You should really be hurting this uh, much more effectively early in the game. Remember the box. I've brought up the box multiple times. I just brought it up on SmackDown. Your box this game, uh, here's your coin mine a little bit further out. Uh, there's some trees, uh, and that's where I think your box should be. Try and get all of your resources inside that starting box. Um, definitely should be possible. Me? It is, it looks like your next hunt, oh, it looks like you shot it away actually. Um, I was gonna say that hunt is gonna be, is pretty far away, it might be difficult to get up to your town center, but this was probably a little bit closer. You just uh, accidentally shot it away here, it looks like so. Um, but crap like that happens to everyone. Um, at least you are trying to get this back to your town center, so eh, kind of an awkward angle you shot him at there. You should like really try and get that going back to your town center and like look at the size of your box already. Like you should have none of your villagers gathering outside of this box, and right now, literally every single one of your villagers is outside of this box. So uh, that's something that you can try and improve on. Try and get all of your resources up as close to your town center as possible. 
Picked up an extra native. Did you ever get your hunting dogs? I think you did. I'm gonna page up and see, make sure hunting dogs improvement completed. Good, so we do have that working for us at the very least. Um, and a lot of what Sam's build comes down to is like I was mentioning, is efficiency. And you haven't been super efficient here early in the game. And so if, you, if you're not very efficient early in the game, like this is probably going to happen. And, and this is probably going to be where it's gonna be a little tricky for you here to continue to uh, proceed forward here just due to the fact that um, that your efficiency hasn't been very great uh, I'd be very surprised at barring any sort of you know good food treasure or something like that you, you will have probably a little bit at least a little bit of vital time here with your 14 village up um, yeah it looks like there was a, a couple seconds there uh, but more importantly now your villagers need to be transitioning and this is like where it becomes even more problematic right like your villagers need to be transitioning back to wood to be able to you know basically do the build effectively and if all your villagers were gathering from hunts hugged right up to your town center it'd be easy pop in the town center pop out on the tree pop into the town center pop out on the tree split like three and three villagers easy you're good to go golden um, but now you've got to like walk a whole bunch of villagers an awkward amount of distance back in this whole time that they're walking around, not gathering resources. So um, that's a little bit of an issue. Uh, gang saw coming down. Uh, in general, when I mean this is this is maybe a, a little bit too high level to expect, but uh, Sam used to in general I think not get gang saw in his build unless he was able to get it before aging to the colonial age and that's something you can do only if you have really good efficiency and uh, I mean you're only gathering a certain amount of wood and then you're going to be relying on the 700 wood shipment to provide most uh, of your gathering there so um, but still getting 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 saws I think I always find just in general but it will make it a little more difficult to get out five and five Getting your place reminds good. Let's make sure that you actually know what uh, what the build entails. Uh, from here, you only want to be gathering an additional 125 wood, and you want to be hard stopping at 125. So we'll make sure that you do hard stop. So here, you're like over gathering wood. If you're specifically are doing Samwise 12s, uh, five musk, five husk build, you're you've already over gathered uh, wood. You should hard stop at 125. Uh, it looks like you did stop reasonably soon to there you're still spending so much time running villagers around like this is this is killing your efficiency you're never going to be able to get out an adequate number of units uh, for this build with how much you've run around i can tell you that much uh, for sure already um it's going to be very difficult um what else we got going on 400 wood coming all right so this is the point where you, you've aged up uh, your 400 wood is here. You should have two villagers in position ready to gather this. And the second you age up, like, when you age up, you should be, like, sitting here, like, you have nothing else to do. Like, you have a villager in queue, you should be spam clicking this. Like, the first thing you want is you want that 700 wood coming when you're doing Sam's build because you want to make sure that that 700 wood gets there in time for you to gather enough of it to, to build a house so that you don't get pop capped. So, like, like you, you should be, like, Click, 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 click. You should be spam clicking that. Um, so that the second you age up, like that should be pri priority number one. And even having like th these multiple seconds here is like is a bit of a mistake. Like this is this is specifically why you're going to get housed. You uh, you, you you ask like why why you're getting housed, and it's because like your 700 wood's still not coming. You've been aged up for. 10 seconds and your 700 wood still isn't coming still not coming and every second that passes by here is time that you're going to get housed so make sure that priority number one is to get that 700 wood coming the second you get aged up uh, also don't need to build your barracks with two villagers only need one that's also compounding the issue so you think of all the things that are compounding your issue here now for like your pop cap reason like you're building with two villagers one you're not gathering enough resources because that villager could be gathering resources you're building the barracks extra fast because you're building with two cdbs and your 700 wood was late as well so um all those things kind of tend to compound themselves uh, stables should be started if you're doing sam's build by now uh, one drop that as soon as possible uh, arguably you want to be dropping that first um and there comes the stable so that's fine i guess 
should still be trying to earn this. You're still, like, every one of your villagers, maybe save a couple of these ones in coin or outside of your proverbial box. Uh, and the way that this, the way that this build works out, so uh, I can tell everything is a little bit delayed here just because uh, the way that this works out is, so the 700 wood should have been here by now. Uh, in fact, you should be like building a house right now. Uh, your stable should already be up. Your barracks should already be up. And you should have one and one in queue. And the way it should work out is this villager training right here should be training. You should have a single musket in queue. And you should have a single hussar in queue. And that will leave you at exactly 20 population. If you take one of these population away and drop that down to 18 uh, from the extra musket, and you queue up one Hussar, you'll be at 20 out of 20 population, you'll still have a villager training, you'll still have a musketeer training, and you'll still have a Hussar training, and your 700 wood will be sitting on the floor. You can gather up that 700 wood, be building a house, and the timing is difficult, but because you've got that house coming up, uh, you've got one in queue of each villager and musketeer and Hussar, if your early game efficiency that I've been hounding on uh, so much early here has been really good so that you're able to maximize the number of resources you currently have in bank, you can theoretically still be training villagers, get out five musketeers, and get out five hussar if you've done everything right and your treasures are lined up. More realistically, you'll probably get out like five hussar and three or four musketeers consistently and still not be skimping on, uh, uh, on CD training. Um, which is theoretically possible. Now, a couple of those things uh, aren't going to happen. Looks like you're maybe going to get housed here. Uh, you've got too many muskets queued up, so your uh, stable is like not going to be able to train a hussar. Uh, here, you queued up like another musk, right? Like if you unqueued a couple of your musk, you could you could be building. Uh, a, you could have a uh, cab started. In fact, I mean you're you're still going to make it here, right? You could. If you had both of these unqueued, you could have a Hussar in queue. Uh, your house is going to get up, and your Musketeers, like, will, like, I mean, you still made the timing, right? And instead, you just decided to queue up a whole bunch of CDB instead. Uh, I mean, now you can still get out two additional Musketeers and get out five Muskets in your first batch. But you could also have a Hussar already training. Uh, you could have still those five muskets and still be perfectly fine so even though you've been a little bit slow it's just like the order that you've queued stuff up in has been a little bit goofy here so i mean you only got out three muskets which isn't great but despite the fact that you've made like some fairly severe errors in the early portions of your build you still could have gotten out five muskets here you could have a musket in queue now like you're just not training super efficiently uh, and the whole point in doing this build in general is to be applying pressure with it. If we take a look at where your opponent is gathering resources from, like you can even see like in the fog of war, like there's a dead bison on here. He's not hurting this super well. Like there is like there's gonna be villagers over here that you could be like I can guarantee you there are villagers here as well that you can be pressuring, right? Like there's always going like that's one of the easiest things to do. Just like look in the fog, like look at his dead animals. Like he's obviously gathering with loads of villagers over here. And the whole point in doing this build is to be applying pressure. And instead of applying pressure, like you only got out two units and three units, which isn't great. Um but you've got them both queued back to like go kill his full HP Explorer, which is just going to buy him even more time. Uh, he probably arguably wouldn't be able to really do much anyways because he's already got out eight Musketeers, but uh, should you have been a little bit more effective with your build and still opted to go back and kill his full HP Explorer, still would be uh, wasting time. So got housed here a little bit. Uh, not training units. Second you get on house, like you should have units being spam queued, just not spending your resources super effectively. But that just comes with like getting your APM up and, and uh, prioritizing doing the right things uh, with your limited APM. Like I'm not by any means a fast player, but uh, I can still do this build fairly effectively because I just know when to use my resources on on which things. I still just make the correct decisions, and as a result, still like can get out a decent number of units. Uh, too many guys here on coin. You've got 16 guys on coin. That's way too many. 10 must. Can you get another big batch out of sack? Alright, let's pause it here, because like, this is a pretty decent army. Like, I mean, you've got 8 muskets, 7 hussars. Uh, let's see what he's got. 
still like I don't know. He's got some muskets. They're split up here. He's hasn't herded very well himself, and so he's a bit worried about defending this uh, resource location over here. He hasn't herded this at all, so he's he's got his army pretty spread out. And so if you were to push in here with eight hussar and seven musketeers over here where he's gathering resources with his army split as much as it is, um, you could crush this army and apply a lot of pressure here. And so what you're just not doing is you're not applying pressure. The reason why you do this build is to apply pressure and you're not applying pressure. Like your units, you're not even making an attempt to raid. Like you're just standing there with your units. The, the strength of this build in itself is not that it's like a super good, like, you know, uh, boomy like mass type thing. Uh, it, it's, it's a crap ton of units really early in the game with a really strong composition and that's what you're gaining with this build and you're not using that uh, to your advantage right now and in fact sending spice trade like you're just like continuing to play boomy and i can guarantee you if you just engage in an all-out boom war and don't try and use your advantages against the brick player you're probably just gonna lose now maybe you know he's not good enough of a brick player to take advantage of this but um Certainly your better Brit players will just what? continue to man manner boom all over your face and you'll push into them and they'll have like a billion upgraded musketeers Wait. and your Hussars will look silly and your muskets aren't as strong as theirs and you're like, well crap, this build sucks, I can't do anything with it. Uh, and it's not because the build is bad, it's just because the way you uh, used it and the way you followed Wait. up with it hasn't Wait. been super good. I mean, it's t 10 minutes and you've just now moved halfway across the map. Like, this is the first... This is the first you've attempted to get across the halfway point in the map, and it, I mean you're going to be sent running home just due to the fact that you know he's got a couple of muskets over there. So try and apply some pressure. Use use that pressure. Use those early units. Use that early composition advantage that you've got to actually apply some pressure to your opponent. Because still you still have a military advantage here. He's still spread out. You've used your hus to like make him at least worried that you're going to be doing something over here and you're not like punishing it as a result like you could be bobbing your muskets in over here picking off muskets like from the fog of war and stuff but you're not doing uh, you are aging uh, you should cancel these bills if you're going to age like you should, you want to you want to age um aging with the marksman like that's not good it, this is so slow like I, I really hope you at least uncancel this villager uh you're already going to be aging up fairly slowly yeah, so I mean, like, you had the resources to age, right? But then you, like, queued it up behind two bills and just let those two bills go. Um, he, he may just, like, push on you, like, right now. If he just pushes in on you while you're, like, slowly aging and you've wasted the time. I mean, you've wasted a lot of time. You had two villagers in queue before your age up and you're aging slow. Like, that's going to just cost you so much time of just downtime that you're not using those resources. Um... It's like two or three full minutes that you just weren't using 2,200 resources that your opponent, I mean, could potentially be using those resources. So, uh, if he, <laughs> if you were to right click on his on your base right now with even this number of musketeers, uh, I'm pretty sure you, you'd be dead. Um, you may you may get away with it just because it's a low low enough level game. But if you were to right click on top of your base right now, if he's got any musketeer upgrades at all, like you'd just fall over and die. Like there's no way you'd be able to hold this, especially aging up slowly, and with where your uh, where your resources are currently. But he's just not going to push. Yeah, he's just like sitting on his base. And my guess is he'll have like an oh shit moment when he realizes you've aged up. And why has he got a church? I don't know. Just. I guess the, the people of the prairie need somewhere to pray, so uh, that's why we've got a church, I guess. Buying yourself a little bit of time with that raid, that's good. Uh, yes. Dude doesn't flinch, he's not afraid. Alright, you've aged up, and let's see if there's an oh shit moment where you like, realize, crap, my opponent's aged. Yep, yeah. oh no, he's aging! Abort! Abandon ship! Everyone go! And, like, this is the point where, like, the game is already over, right? Like, when when this needed to happen for for this guy uh, was two minutes ago while well, your age up was in queue slowly behind two CDBs when he had a massive military advantage. Uh, he's had a massive military advantage for a long time, and he's just not doing anything about it. And now he's pushing in, and, like, 
you're sending two Felix, and two Felix is gonna wreck like basically any number of muskets, right? So I can see how you could potentially win from here, but uh, still have a lot of unspent resources. Really do try and be spending those resources um, in whatever way possible. Like 2,500, 3,000, however many resources this is, doesn't matter like what type of units they are. Like even if they're like freaking crossbows or pikes, they're gonna be more useful than. Uh, than just sitting as bank in your in your in your bank. Here, here come two falconets. Let's see if he just tries to fight you. Cause like he's actually maybe still got enough stuff where he could just fight you and still like win. Uh, two falconets. Uh, a little bit of stagger mode action like that. You could probably just be engaging the Hussar here. Like, if they're not going to be raiding, like, you probably just want to be buying as much time as possible. Uh, crap, he, he maybe just has enough stuff just to like, pour into you and just kill you. That one Felk is doing work, though, but uh, Minutemen should have been called a long time ago. Uh, should also be rallied into the fight. A couple more Sturms definitely going to help. Fight section is still pretty close. Uh, you could be fighting with your CDB here. He's only got ranged units. Yeah, he probably should be just fighting with all of your CDB here. You have two shipments. Holy crap. Send those, like, you You need to be sending your shipments as well. Like, eight, uh, eight scrim, seven scrim. Also, take four to goon out of your deck and put in five. <laughs> Eight skirm, seven skirm would still maybe save the day here if those would have been sent like at the right time. Are you still gonna hold here? No, sure. Well, maybe. I mean, you've got pure skirm versus pure loss. You're down to like super low numbers of CDB. Uh, shouldn't be sending 1k coin. Like, what you need right now is military units. You've got a tech advantage, use it. Uh, He's building a mill, even though he's got complete map control, and there's hunts maybe in line of sight of that mill. It's a mistake. He's building longbows, which is good, at least. 1k coin is, like like I said, like not useful. You've, already, you've got plenty of resources. Like you're not, you're not spending them already. You don't need more resources. You just need military units. I mean, I think you're going to lose. I mean, I think you lose here just because he's got way more stuff than you do. Well, unless... Oh, my God. Unbelievable. Seriously? Are you going to pop up five curves on top of those long blows and he's just going to, like, resign or something? Oh. Come on. And now we see why Corsairs are such a good unit. So they kill long blows really, really good. Should, like, split these up so they're, like, maximizing damage. What? Who won? Who won? Did he resign? He's got 46 vils still. Two mils. I guess, I guess he thinks he's out of food. He's not. Like, he's got vision of these deer. I... He's even going to kill a couple of the Corsairs. This guy's not lost this game, by the way. He's even got money for another mill that he's dropped down here. He knows where his next coin mine is. Like, this wasn't a win for you, by the way. Like, I, I think you're probably still in a losing position here. You just got lucky that he did, got frustrated by five Corsairs and decided to resign. Because all of your vills, I'm pretty sure, are either dead or in your TC. You're about to have to walk all the way across the map again because your villagers are like pretty out of position and running out of resources. I, I wouldn't consider this a win. Like it looks like he resigned or maybe I don't know who I, I actually don't know who resigned because the game is like still winnable from either position. But I'm guessing because you said you only have replays of wins that he resigned. Um it doesn't matter. Like the, the important parts of the game have already taken place. Um, I'm just I'm just a bit confused as to why the replay uh, has ended. But uh, either way, uh, to get back to the important points, the things that actually matter. Um, think inside the box, as Interjection said uh, earlier. Uh, try and get all of your resources up close to your town center. That efficiency is super important when doing this build. Uh, secondly. 
make use of your military unit. So if we take a look at the military unit counts, um, I don't know that you were like super far military unit population. I don't know that you're super far ahead. I mean, if you take a look at you, you kind of flatline here for a little bit, so you're not being super efficient. But he flatlines too, and you're, I mean, you still have somewhat of an advantage. And he was split up, and you were uh, potentially much more closely grouped together with your units. So m the strength in this build is making use of timings and applying pressure at correct times, uh, and not necessarily. Um, like just having more stuff than he does or booming or like France Eco OP or anything like that. Like that's what Britt wants to do from this matchup. Like just get to a point where he's got an unkillable number of muskets and your goal is to stop him from getting there. And you do that by applying pressure and, and not just like camping out on your half of the map. So try and do that. Um, and then when you do decide to age, which I mean is at some point you're going to have to do regardless in this matchup, um, whether or not you know it's after your initial five hussar five muskets or after you've made some units for a while or whatever at some point you're going to want to age up when you do decide to age up do it with like decisiveness don't do it with a whole bunch of stockpiled resources with a slow age up queued up behind two cdb like that you're just spending so much time wasting resources there when you could potentially be like gaining some sort of tech advantage and uh like I said, it resulted in this weird, like, stale game at the end where uh, he, it looks like he resigns, but, I mean, the game's definitely not over. And, uh, um, yeah, but uh, hopefully that helped you. Um, I'm not actually sure what happened there at the end, but uh, hopefully those early points in, in the game helped you out a little bit and, uh, and is something that you can gain, so... Uh, that's going to do it uh, for the end of this stream. Thanks for tuning in, guys, uh, as always. If you have a game that you want to submit, you want me to watch, make sure to drop uh, a link to the replay uh, at this link, and I'll be happy to take a look at your gameplay. At the end of SmackDown, I do try and do one each week, so uh, drop them in there. Otherwise, thanks for tuning in, guys, as always. I appreciate it, uh, and I'll be back uh, next week with Interjection for another Best of 7 series. Thanks for tuning in, guys.